Hi there, everybody. Uh, welcome to Fanshawe College's virtual open house. Thanks for being here. Uh, my name's John Isma, and I work in the reputation and brand management office here at the London campus of Fanshawe College. And uh, I'm gonna host uh, today's session for you. And um, just before I introduce uh, our guest today about the programs you came to learn about, uh, I just wanna go through a few housekeeping items. So Bob, if I can get you to jump ahead on that slide there, please. Awesome, thank you. Uh, so uh, if everyone doesn't mind, please uh, have your webcams and mics turned off for the duration of this presentation. We'd appreciate that. Um, if you do have any questions, we do have time for a Q&A session after the presentation. And uh, what you can do is uh, there's a questions tab here uh, within GoToWebinar. Type in your question there and just hit the question mark and you can put those in anytime. Uh, I'll be checking those out after the presentation and uh, and we should have a few minutes to uh, to get to any questions you have for Bob today. Um, uh, if you come up with questions after this session, um, any other topics uh, or anything about the program that you know you forgot to ask uh, Bob today, um, then uh, what you can do is email my future at fanshawc.ca that email addresses on your screen there. You can also uh, book appointments uh, with our recruiters here at Fanshawe College. Um, they're available for one-on-one -on -one appointments and uh, so there's an option for you um, if you have any questions after uh, this session today. Um, if you run into any issues uh, with uh, this this meeting uh, running slowly or uh, getting finicky at all, you might have too many windows uh, running on your computer uh, at home or wherever you are. So so maybe just take a minute to close down any apps or windows you have if you are experiencing um, things running a bit slowly. So I'll give you a minute to do that right now. Um, so yeah, without, uh, without any further ado here, uh, Bob Campbell here uh, is here from the uh, St. Thomas Elgin campus of Fanshawe College, and uh, he is here to talk about uh, two great programs, Renewable Energies Technician and the Mechanical Engineering Technician Program, uh, both offered at our St. Thomas Elgin campus. So Bob's got a lot to um, share with you. And again, uh, if you have any questions, please pop them in the Q&A, and uh, I'm going to pass this over to Bob and disappear here um, and come back. Uh, when the when uh, Bob's done his presentation, so Bob, uh, uh, it's all over to you. Good, thank you very much, and welcome everybody. Um, I have a, I have a lot to speak about in the next uh, 15 to 20 minutes uh, before you uh, have some questions for me about these two programs, uh, and I'm going to basically talk about them both in this slideshow. I'll uh, begin with the renewable energy technician program and uh, then talk about the uh, mechanical engineering. Uh, if you have any, if you, uh, have any questions, uh, you know, type them in as, uh, as soon as you can into the chat and I'll be happy to answer them. All right, so let's get started. Uh, first off, speaking about the RET program, uh, we have now begun our two-year program. We are in the uh, second, we have a second year cohort right now and we have a first year cohort. Uh, it's, so it is a two-year program with co-op that is uh, happening during the summers, all right? You would go to a normal two terms of school starting September and uh, ending in April, and then go out on a co-op uh, session uh, during the summer of each of those years, okay? Um, so it's focused on the renewable energy sector. We are very broad-based in the fact that we teach uh, you something uh, about the wind turbine uh, industry, and we teach you something about the photovoltaic solar. Those are the two main thrusts of the program, but we also in, encompass uh, some other more fringe or more niche type of industries that are occurring in renewable energies, all right? So uh, I'm going to uh, talk about all of them in some respect. Uh, renewable energy technology, generally uh, build upon the existing trades and skills. And what that means is that uh, in our first 
two terms. We really are very core oriented. We're looking at electrical principles, fundamentals. We're looking at uh, mechanical fundamentals, right? So we look a lot of a, a lot of things that are uh, encompassed in the uh, you know beginning stages of an electrical electrician maybe or or a mill rig because those are uh, base parts of renewable energy as far as um, wind turbines go as far as photovoltaic also to some degree uh, biogas industry as well all right so those are the core subjects that we talk about in the first mostly that we look at in the first uh, year the program delivers foundational knowledge in relevant electrical electronic and mechanical disciplines all right and then we get into some more specific uh special uh knowledge renewable energy technician uh program is the code ret3s so if you're interested in the program and you're looking to get into it that's the code that you'll be looking for all right Program graduates leave with a solid foundation in science, definitely because we are dealing with a lot of science and renewable energy. We need to uh, talk about uh, um, basically the very basics, basics of electrical, but then looking at the um, science of the sun, um, solar energy in many aspects. Uh, how, do we, how do we get energy out of uh, biomass? So things like that. And you can see some of the subject components that we're talking about, photovoltaics and solar thermal. So the aspects of the sun, we're looking at wind energy, we're looking at biomass, which is uh, a biogas uh, aspect. We're looking at geothermal industry, right? Which is uh, a lot to do with heating and cooling of, uh, of a, uh, even from residential right up into an industrial facilities. And also we're starting to look more and more because it's a very large and important part of renewable energy is uh, energy storage. How do we store this energy that we're producing or converting from uh, wind turbines and from solar so that we can use it either later or buffer the grid uh, when we don't have wind and when we don't have the sun shining, all right? So some of those things have to do with uh, hydrogen fuel cells uh, and other forms of energy storage, lithium ion batteries, things like that. All right, so those are some of the more prominent parts of the program, okay? So industry practices are always, uh, regardless of the program we're, when we're in, uh, these is to have the safety involved, all right? So safety and environmental conservation is always a paramount part of it. Um, we want to make sure that when you're working on this equipment, when you're maintaining it, that you are safe. So we need to make sure that you're familiar with the safety aspects of it. Program also in introduces the general concept associated with global climate change. So these are some of the other courses that we offer that look at how can we incorporate these uh, renewable energy aspects into our larger energy picture. Right, you're used to uh, hearing about the nuclear plants, about the hydro plant, hydro facilities. We want to incorporate these uh, distribution aspects of uh, photovoltaic and wind into that entire system. All right, and part of that is the uh, sustainability aspect. All right. So upon completion of the program, students will have the skills to perform site analysis. You will actually be looking at um, a small residential site, for instance. What would it take to put solar panels on the roof of this house? Uh, what would I need to install in order for that house to either be uh, part of the grid, send that power to the grid, or to be um, off-grid, self-reliant, right? So we want to basically give you the, the skills to do that. Graduates will have an extensive working knowledge of installation, commissioning, and routine maintenance. You can basically fall into a job after you're done here that can range from a technician at a wind farm, probably one of the larger facilities that we are uh, trying to accommodate, or start your own business. Maybe you're going to install panels or you're going to uh, do testing on, uh, on facilities, on uh, 
basically some sort of a uh, energy audit. All right. So there's a great, a large spectrum of possibilities there. Uh, in addition, graduates will acquire a working knowledge of solar thermal, hydrogen fuel cell technology. We're just getting into that. We're making that grow and be part of the program. And then geothermal and biomass as well. And students will also graduate with a working knowledge of green building concepts and energy efficiency. All right. So there's quite a quite a large span of of uh, possibilities for any graduate out of the program. All right. So uh, that was a very quick. Uh, run through of the RET program. I'm sure you'll have questions. If you could save those for the time being, I'll just uh, quickly chat about the uh, mechanical engineering, which has a lot of similarities, no doubt about it. Uh, and then uh, you can definitely uh, bring your questions forward and I can uh, go through those, all right? So moving on to the mechanical engineering technician, which is uh, considered a mill rate. And I have some, some very specific points to make about uh, whether or not you are apprentice or not. So make sure that if you have any questions about those, you bring them up, but I will make some points on that, All right? So the MIM program, and that's the code for it, uh, is a 52 week program, all right? It's not a two year, uh, you're there for one full year, starting in September, ending in August, and uh, basically you'll go through three terms consecutively, all right? Uh, it is focused on the aspects of mechanical maintenance and uh, basically all aspects of, of uh, a millwright's uh, career, all right, to be a journeyman millwright. Uh, and we're going to cover many different topics or subjects that are in that field, all right? Graduates would ideally be suited to enter the industrial maintenance field as entry level pre apprentice millwrights. And I want to make that clear is that by taking this, this post secondary program, this one year, 52 week program, you are not an apprentice, but you have some skills that will get you into an apprenticeship that much quicker. All right, because a lot of employers are out there looking for um, people with skills. They want to have them come in and be able to do certain jobs. Uh, immediately and then they can start to they can possibly be sponsored and start working on their apprenticeship all right so it's a pre-apprenticeship post-secondary program so mill rates generally uh, study uh, numerous uh, disciplines and I, I can't tell you how many are involved in, in the in the career of, of different mill rates out there right now some are doing you know they strictly do welding or they strictly do machining or they're strictly into uh, machine maintenance. So there's lots of options and lots of opportunities in this field. Uh, they include machine and equipment maintenance repairs. Um, you could be in a plant doing that sort of work. Uh, you can be working on industrial machinery only. You can be doing lathe work, mill work. So this is mill work with steel and uh, as well as welding, right? So everybody, uh, I mean, you can find mill rates out there that have all of these skills or part of these skills. And generally what they wanna have is a little bit of experience in all of them when they start to get into a career. And our program can do that for you. All right, so program graduates leave with a solid foundation in mechanical fluid power, which is hydraulics and pneumatics, if you wanted to be a little bit more specific about that. Uh, energy transmission, and electrical skills. So uh, oftentimes you don't think that you have anything to do with electrical, but it is a growing large part of being a journeyman uh, mill rate. All right, the best industry practice of health and safety, again, we have to mention that you that's a large part of your everyday work life is being safe, being, uh, and keeping your health while you're at it, all right? So of course is delivered within the program. Every aspect of the program, we're always uh, in, infusing that safety aspect of it, all right? 
Graduates will have an in-depth working knowledge of current practices and in installation, commissioning, routine maintenance, and industrial equipment. That's a large part of uh, a, a standard maintenance electric, or sorry, a maintenance mill rates position. Sorry. Uh, they will be capable of functioning effectively in varied industrial sectors. Everything, uh, pretty much anywhere where you're going to need mechanical uh, repair, you should find a mill rate. Okay. In addition, graduates will possess a substantial in installation and troubleshooting skills uh, as you go through. And that's a large part of it as well. In addition, graduates will possess substantial installation and troubleshooting skills related to control systems. And that's what I, I mentioned. We, we have components in our course about PLCs because they are uh, a very large part of, of any uh, industrial environment. All right. All right, so uh, kind of the last point on this, and it looks like my timing's pretty good. Uh, so this is the MIM program, and it is recognized by the Ministry of Labor, uh, Skills and Development now, Training Skills and Development. So this is the, the uh, Ontario government body that oversees uh, apprenticeship now. All right, and our program is recognized so that when you are finished, and you go out and you are successful in finding a job and that employer has the ability to sponsor you so that's one thing you should be looking for is a uh, an employer that can actually uh, sponsor you as an apprentice when that happens you will be exempt from the first level of schooling all right all of apprentice mill rights have to uh, go to school for 720 hours of their 7,200 hours of uh, work experience, 720 hours of schooling. So you are basically exempt from 240 hours of that. And you can keep working, get your time in, and then work, move on to uh, level two. All right, so that's a very important point that I always wanna make sure that people are aware of but you have to have a 60% average, all right? It has to be a C average in order to carry on or the ministry will not recognize it. You would still get a diploma from the college, but you would not uh, be exempt from level one, all right? So, and uh, as mentioned, this these programs are both uh, at the St. Thomas campus. And uh, finally, uh, just in case you have uh, more questions that we can't answer tonight, uh, by all means, email me. Email me is by far the best way to get a hold of me because we, with the certain situation with COVID right now, uh, we are in the campus very, very little. So um, leaving phone messages and calling me uh, is hard to reach, but you can definitely reach me through that email. If you have any other general questions, uh, you can re really you can reach uh, Melantha uh, at her email or her phone number as well. Okay, so by all means, uh, contact me by email, and we can I can uh, feed you some more information as needed. All right, and so thank you very much. I know that was very short and brief, but we do have some time left for questions. So if you have any questions, by all means, get them to me right now. Uh, and I can definitely elaborate on anything if you'd like. Okay. Great stuff, Bob. Thanks so much for, for all that information about those two great programs and very important programs. Um, so uh, as Bob mentioned, we, we have just under 10 minutes for uh, Q&A right now. Uh, if you do have any questions for for Bob, now's the time to get them in. Use the question mark icon, and uh, I do see one coming in here. Um, and uh, as it says in the uh, on the slideshow, there you can also uh, connect after this. Uh, we'll leave that slide up there for a bit. We do have one question here, Bob. Um, uh, is there a possibility? that uh, some of the in-class material is, is, uh, will be done virtually. Uh, so it doesn't specify w what program, but they're, they're just wondering um, how much of the content's delivered virtually. Well, in our present state right now, uh, basically 
with these two courses, they're very similar in the fact that they have a, a theoretical component and a practical component. So what's happening right now is the theory classes are being uh, delivered online. Uh, but the practical, uh, you have to be face to face on campus. So it's kind of a 60 40 split right now where you're, you can stay online uh, for those theory classes, but you will be in for um, different practical and you definitely need to because you're be going to be working on lathes, you're going to be welding. You're going to be working on pumps, uh, PLCs, things like that. So uh, you definitely need to have both. But it's not all theory and it's not all practical at this point. Hopefully we'll be back uh, sooner than later to a point where we can be on campus all the time. Okay, okay. fantastic. Thank you. Um, keep your questions coming in there, folks. If you have anything else, uh, we, we still have just a little bit under 10 minutes with Bob here. Um, okay. Bob, do, do you want to talk I about some elaborate, I can elaborate, sorry, I can elaborate on the campus itself. I thought that might be of interest to some, some of the viewers. Uh, because we are a small campus, um, we have a small, small classes. And oftentimes uh, people or students are a little bit intimidated by very, very large classes, are usually around 20, all right? Uh, and in our lab situation, we, we normally wouldn't have any more than 20 to a, to a lab. Uh, and that's usually, we're usually around the 10 to 12 region for a, a lab class, which gives us very, uh, you know, almost one-on-one -on -one, uh, coverage with students and a very, a very good um, teaching atmosphere and environment to learn in. So that is a benefit. Um, Another benefit that's always mentioned is that because we're a smaller campus, uh, there's free parking um, and uh, it's very friendly. We do a lot of things on campus with students when we're there, obviously, uh, but there's a lot of social going on because we don't have the, the larger uh, amenities uh, that London campus has. Okay. Fantastic. Um, okay. Did you want to talk about this, the lab specifically? The RET lab is very modern, very, very relevant. Uh, did you want to um, elaborate on maybe for both programs, what, what specific equipment and, and how modern the facilities are there that they would experience at, at your campus? Sure. So we're always trying to update. Uh, we basically have a state of the art electrical labs and we do a lot of core electrical in the first term. Um, we have what we call the RET lab. Um, and we have specific trainers for um, the wind turbine training uh, so that it mimics uh, a full-size industrial um, wind turbine, okay? We don't have, obviously, the facilities or the, uh, the money, I guess, to, to, to have a million or $2 million uh, large wind turbine, but we, we have trainers that mimic them. So you can go in there and basically see what everything would work as if you were working on exactly the same program that the wind turbine was working on, all right, or was, was operating on. We also have trainers for um, uh, photovoltaic. So we can basically uh, set up a system that would be off-grid or a system that would be attached to or part of the grid itself. <clears throat> we do uh, we have a, a mock-up roof area where we can install panels as if we were installing them on a residential roof or a commercial roof or uh, a flat roof that could be commercial or industrial, right? You don't normally have that in a residential situation. So we can uh, offer you training in those aspects of the uh, two main draws, which are PV and uh, wind turbines. And we also have a, a biogas plant it's a very small plant. We don't put out a lot of product called methane, but it mimics a full-size biogas plant as well. All right, and um, we are we were very successful last year in producing uh, some biogas from that plant. Uh, we've been working at that for a few years to get that done. All right, um, and that you know basically what we're trying to do is is show you what's out there as far as the industries go and. Uh, Kind of mirror or mimic in a very small kind of a micro uh, of it to see what they're doing out there. 
okay? Um, so that's our RET lab, and we also have the electrical and mechanical shops where we do uh, a lot of electrical basics, fundamentals, and a lot of hydraulics in our mechanical shop because hydraulics is a large part of wind turbine uh, operation as well, all right? Um, there was one other thing I wanted to mention, and it kind of slipped my mind. Can't remember now. <laughs> That's all right. We, we can come back. Uh, we got we got a couple of minutes left here with Bob. If if anyone uh, has any final questions, please uh, type those in so we can we can get those answered for you. Um, I was just going to ask, uh, and maybe this is an RE uh, renewable energy specific question, but just how much demand is there? for jobs out there right now? How, how Can you talk about how many jobs are out there, how much demand there is right now? Well, that's a good question. You know, we, we've uh, seen our graduates uh, fall slightly in the last couple of years because of changes in the marketplace for Ontario generally. Uh, but the rest of the country, uh, if you're willing to uh, travel outside of Ontario, uh, there are ample number of jobs in uh, both wind and solar. Solar installations throughout the country, some hot spots right now are BC, Alberta, and Nova Scotia. Uh, um, because of what's what's uh, happened in the last little while in Ontario, um, the projects have dropped, but there is still a lot of work and um, there's going to be more and more as um, we start to change over to these, as you can see in from a, from a government point of view, a lot of governments are looking for ways to uh, to be sustainable and to uh, make these greenhouse gas uh, emission levels that they promised that they can do. So ways to do that are through renewable energy. And uh, the market in the world, the potential in the world, the potential in the country is, is still very, very uh, good. Okay, and I would, you know, we're basically, uh, not going to have any trouble filling jobs uh, from a big picture. It depends, I guess, on how many grads we have, <laughs> but uh, for sure we can uh, fi find jobs. And as far as mill rates go, uh, there is such a large potential for mill rate uh, positions right now. Uh, there's more jobs than there are graduates. So it's just a matter of getting your experience, getting your graduation, getting your apprenticeship, and uh, you'll be working for sure. Fantastic. Great. Thank you. Uh, we have about a minute left here. Um, any any final notes or, or thoughts that, that you would want to share with anyone out there, Bob? There's no, there's no other questions right at the moment. Okay. No, I just, uh, like I say, uh, ex basically research uh, and look for, if you're interested in the mill rate position or with, our, with renewable energies, uh, I think there's great potential in both of them. Uh, by all means, contact either myself uh, or I can I can definitely direct you in the right direct give you the right direction for some of the more general administrative questions for the college uh, with our personnel or administration there. And we can answer uh, pretty much all your questions about the course or the school and what we offer. Fantastic, thank you. So thank you very so much. Yeah, I guess uh, we're going to wrap things up now. Uh, Bob, thanks very much for everything. Um, thanks to to everyone who attended this session. Um, we uh, and thank you for your questions as well. Um, hopefully, we got to uh, talk about some of the content that you wanted to hear about. Um, you know, the and this amount of time we only uh, can scratch the surface, but uh, there's there's more information out there. Um, you can access it there. Bob's provided his email to you if you'd like to contact him with, with more questions about any of the programs. Um, again, if you come up with any more questions tonight or this weekend, uh, you can uh, connect with us uh, anytime. So my future at fanshawc.ca uh, for your general college questions. Uh, you can have a one-on-one -on -one appointment with a recruiter there uh, and you can book an appointment at fanshawc.ca slash connect if you do have uh, specific questions about the program again uh, bob's contact info his email that is there uh, for you um, please uh, watch your email uh, this weekend uh, we'll be sending out some more details 
uh, about open house activities uh, for this Saturday, actually. So uh, keep an eye on your email. Um, that pretty much uh, wraps things up. Uh, Bob, thanks so much for talking about uh, these two programs with us today. I uh, really appreciate that. Well, thank you for having me. And thanks to everybody who came. Thanks uh, for coming out to our virtual open house and I uh, hope you enjoy any other sessions that uh, you get a chance to uh, check out uh, this weekend or next week. Uh, so thanks everyone. Have a, have a great night. Bye now. Bye-bye.